Thank you for standing by and welcome to the CAN Group Half Year Results Investor Webinar for Financial Year 2022. All participants are in a listen only mode. There'll be a presentation followed by a Q&A session from questions we received by email and live during the webinar. Presenting on behalf of CAN Group today, we have the CEO, Peter Kroc, CFO, Deborah Ambrosini, and COO, Shane Duncan. The presentation today will last approximately 15 minutes, followed by the Q&A session thereafter, finishing by 10 a.m. Eastern time. To begin, I'll hand it over to Peter. Please go ahead. Terrific, thanks, Matt, and welcome everyone. Very pleased to be able to uh, be here on Zoom to give you a half year update. After what's been an incredibly challenging uh, end to 2021 for everyone with uh, COVID on, on a number of fronts, but um, really pleased to be able to provide you with an update today. Uh, joined with me is Deborah Ambrosini, our CFO, who joined us in September of 21, and Shane Duncan, who you've uh, most of you will have met before as our Chief Operating Officer. So today we'll um, run you through a number of uh, topics to bring you up to date, and um, I'll start off by handing over to Deborah to uh, give us an update on the financial results. Thanks. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Peter. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation. Uh, revenue for the half year, we're pleased to say, grew to 3.2 million, which was up 2.1 million, or 193% on the prior corresponding period. The company also received an R&D tax incentive during the period of 2.2 million. We received that in December 21, and related to the 30 June 2021 period. This can be seen in the other income line. The company was also able to increase the fair value of its investment in ZAM after the purchase of this investment by Rua during the period, and that revaluation can also be seen in the other income line. Operating expenses grew during the period in line with expectations as the revenue increased significantly. The loss for the half year was $8.28 million, which was down 11.9% on the prior corresponding period after the increase in revenue and the decrease in finance expenses during the period. The company closed the period with cash of $10.68 million, which was up 7.5 million on the prior period after completion of successful capital raising activities during the half year. The company will continue to monitor its expenses and cash positions very closely going forward into the next half year. And now I'll hand over to Shane Duncan, who will talk about the operating activities of the business. Thanks, Deb, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Um, as Deb mentioned, the commercial side of the business had a significant increase in uh, in revenue and sales and production um, this half versus the corresponding half last year. A lot of that's been driven by the increase in the number of B2B customers and, and the traction they're gaining with their execution of their sales strategies. And we've also signed a number of new supply agreements. You know, we achieved a very significant step, which we'll talk more about in a minute around getting the upgrade to our Southern facility to allow us first time to be a manufacturer of finished products. So we can produce and distribute API and also medicinal cannabis products under that GMP license. Peter will touch in a minute um, how quickly we're moving towards completion of the Mildura facility, which also includes the Savvy Farm capsule manufacturer equipment that we brought in from Switzerland um, last year. And now at the point of commissioning and um, commencing our first batches. And I'll also talk in a minute about um, the progress we're making on our regi first registered product. In terms of, um, as I said, we've got that GMP license. We've commenced manufacturing our first batches of flour that we ordered that orders that, from orders that we received in the uh, first half of the financial year. We've increased that number of customers. As I said, we're up to, you know, um, 19 customers, B2B customers at the moment, and those customers have driven this change in the number of oil bottles, particularly being the only range we've had available of finished products in the first half from 2,800 bottles to over nearly 16,000 bottles um, in the first half of FY22. And we, we're seeing, we've got forecasts and forward orders where we'll see that increase significantly to um, another 40,000 bottles we estimate for the rest of the financial year. And now we have that GMP license, we'll pack off at the moment, we're estimating at least 300 kilos of dry fire products um, for the balance of the financial year. GMP manufacturing step and capability, our southern facility is, is a transformational commercial opportunity for us. It's part of the capital raise 
that we uh, closed last year to raise funds to convert part of the facility into this higher specification room to, fin to pack and finish and release um, dried flower products. Um, there has been significant demand for flour both here in Australia, GMP flour here in Australia and also in the overseas medicinal cannabis markets. And this places us really well to have this first license, this capability and to be able to get into the manufacturing of these finished products um, as we prepare for unlocking more capacity in Mildura particularly, but also we're utilising the one and a half tonne of capacity that we have at the Southern facility at the moment. And those first batches have been packed and they'll be released in the next couple of weeks. We move now to the Sati Farm products. So just a quick reminder, we purchased the Sati Farm business last year. Sati Farm is a capsule form of medicinal cannabis products. So it's a patent protected product that allows a more, um, more elegant delivery a more efficient delivery of the, the medicine into the bloodstream. And we've, we've, tagged, we've got some um, data on file around this product that we've been able to utilize in our registration process. So we have, uh, we're well advanced in the preparation of many parts of the dossier. Um, we announced the other day that we now have ethics, ethics committee approval to commence our phase three, our final phase of this registration dossier and registration program. Um, we've had it, we've had a pre-submission discussion with the TGA about our registration strategy and got some good comments and feedback from the TGA around our program, which will help, help streamline and also inform what we do in terms of getting ready for that submission of the dossier. And all the, all the parts are now ready. We've got the clinical trial product release. It's ready for patient supply. The clinical trial sites have been selected and they're ready to commence recruiting, recruiting patients in, uh, in March this year. From the UK uh, and European side of the business or Sadi Farm commercial business in general, um, we have had some delays in getting some uplift on sales in the UK, particularly as some regulatory hurdles, Food Safety UK have um, put some regulations in around the quality and um, purity and the data supporting the CBD products that will be available in, in Europe. Um, that, that information is due to be released in the, in the coming weeks, but that hasn't held back a number of UK retailers looking to take the Sadi Farm product forward. So we have commitments to take the product forward now. Um, a couple of customers are looking to make the Sadi Farm product their anchor product for their CBD category, primarily around its advanced delivery um, characteristics and, um, and um, benefits. And we continue to expand the range. We're launching a 25 milligram product into the SAS uh, program here in Australia. So that'll give us a 25 and 50 milligram dose strength into the Australian market. And that'll be important, particularly with starting new patients and also using pa uh, treating patients who need a lower dose of CBD for some of the conditions that, that are being treated. I mentioned earlier that we've got the line installed and we're manufacturing those initial batches from the Mildura facility. That'll also extend to THC containing products uh, throughout the, the rest of this financial year and they'll be available for sale into the SAS market later um, in uh, the calendar year 22. And as I said, it's a patent protected technology. Um, we think it allows us a real differentiation when we get to being a registered product and sitting on a pharmacy shelf. It'll be, you know, our, our estimation is it'll be the first of the advanced delivery products. So very, very familiar product form for patients and something that'll be very easy for them to comprehend the dose form and, um, and stay compliant. And all of this will lead to, you know, we're, we're anticipating very strong revenue growth for Sadi Farm over the balance of the financial year. But uh, that's all for me. I'll hand back to Peter now, who's going to uh, give you an update on the, how we're progressing to completion of the Mildura facility. Terrific, Peter Shane. 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 And um, just dwelling on this photo for a minute, uh, someone did say to me the other day, when you see um, uh, landscaping works happening around a building site, you know you're very close to completion. And that's exactly where we are with, with Mildura. Um, for what had been... Uh, a very challenging half year with COVID and uh, limitations around what could happen with construction on site, construction numbers. Um, 
thankfully we qualified for and got a, an exemption uh, and were able to work under a critical infrastructure project banner with the Victorian government to keep the, the program largely on, on time. Uh, the progress we've made is, is really exciting and we're, we're getting ready to take handover from the principal contractor. Uh, as we've reported before, um, we've been in parallel uh, commissioning and running through with uh, our both laboratory and production capability on site. Uh, through the half year in the run up to Christmas, we had the ODC on site for their inspection. And, and I'll update you shortly around the regulatory environment, but that was a key step for us. Uh, and we've also had the TGA conduct a, a, a virtual audit of the facility um, as a subsequent, subsequent event in in January. So the license process continues and from the ODC side, we're uh, working through the permit, permit process. Uh, we've mentioned before that we're using our southern facility to initiate uh, material that's going to be shipped up to Mildura by way of mother plants that have already um, been established at southern and as soon as we get our permit they'll be moved in. And we're also preparing the first commercial crops that will come in uh, so we'll be taking the cuttings at Southern, but moving them in straight into vegetative and, and uh, commercial crop production uh, as soon as we, we have access to, to the site under the ODC permit. Uh, the other side, of, um, or in fact, I'll just move on to photos around what we're doing with our laboratory. So this will be a, a TGA GMP laboratory. The uh, inspection is... is been undertaken in January and we're working through the response to that now and that process is underway. Our manufacturing suite has also been commissioned and this was also part of the TGA inspection um, and we've been able to initiate and we've started engineering batches with the SATI farm line that, that we see. From a cultivation perspective, the fit out, and we're looking on the right hand side here of the mother room and uh, getting that process underway, uh, air handling units operational and the uh, control systems for environment all being commissioned at the moment. So the next six months uh, and this, this next half um, is going to be very exciting in terms of, of bringing uh, Mildura to life with plants in the, in the system. Uh, the TGA capability around both our lab and um, manufacturing extraction and manufacturing capability. And as Shane mentioned before, bringing the uh, Sally Farm capsule um, production online once we have that GMP license that uh, we can move from engineering into full production batches with, with GMP. Uh, yeah, with GMP. So, we keep banging on about the regulatory progress and, and the, the whole regulatory environment we work in is, is absolutely critical for this industry. So in the, in the first half, achieving our GMP license for the Southern facility has absolutely been critical and, and a great feather in the cap for the team having, having done that. And it is now operational and we've got the first material going through and, and to be released from the, the product. Um, the product will be released shortly. On the Mildura facility front, um, as I've said, both the ODC and TGA have been uh, across what we're doing there. From an ODC perspective, they implemented their single license, um, uh, came into effect on the 24th of December last year, and CAN has now been issued a single license which covers all of our facilities. So um, Southern, Northern and Mildura uh, are all operating under a single license. Uh, and the permit process uh, is following through that through that now. From an industry perspective, just to change gears and talk about uh, what's happening, these um, highlights are from the Fresh Leaf Analytics report uh, that was published at the end of uh, end of the half last year. Um, we have seen the the market in Australia and and the overall segment move forward uh, with. They were putting the um, overall market at a $200 million market in Australia. We've seen the patient numbers grow through the SAS scheme uh, and, and that's become more streamlined and we're seeing the, the patients pick up. In terms of, um, there was a lot of noise last year around the S3 uh, low dose CBD product coming, becoming available over the counter. Um, 
and that is expected to see patients move in, in that direction, but that will only be once uh, products make it through that whole regulatory process. But um, that's underway. And as Shane said, we're making great progress with that. What we are seeing come in and, and has been announced by the TGA is that they are going to change the regulatory landscape here in Australia, particularly around imported products having to, to meet the same level of GMP that uh, Australian producers um, are bringing forward. So that's important. We've said all along for um, doctors and patients to have confidence in the products that they're getting access to and they understand how they've been produced. That's, um, that's gonna be really important. And it will be an interesting year ahead, I think in terms of, or this is freshly pointed it out, in terms of what's going to happen around R&D and, and potential industry consolidation in this space. In terms of what that means for, for CAN, it's um, exactly why and what we've done in set, setting up and what uh, where we're up to with, with our capability and capacity coming online um, and that being fully integrated with uh, GMP through to finished dose forms of flour, uh, oil, formulated oils and, and capsules in our study farm. The expansion of the range that Shane talked about is going to be important um, in that CAN holds the, uh, the global rights to the, the patented um, technology for delivering cannabinoids in, in the form that we produce through study farm. And we'll be doing that here in Australia, which is, uh, which is really important. And I've, I've mentioned the TGA changes as well. Um, the requirement to produce at scale and certainty of supply is absolutely critical and can set up and, and obviously well placed to service that requirement here in, in Australia. So in terms of the outlook for the second half, um, we're keeping a strong focus on sales and production. Uh, we expect momentum to continue both here in Australia and internationally. The regulatory focus for us has been key the whole way through and having those licenses in place here in the Australian environment, but also uh, for key export markets is, is a key focus for us. Bringing Mildura online and starting production is, um, is very exciting and that's, uh, that's coming in this, this half. And we're obviously going to be ramping up what we're doing through our, our southern facility as well now that that pathway has been open to us. And the uh, S3 registration process and this, this final clinical trial that we're, we're starting in March is, um, is, is really exciting. So as I've said, with, with CAN, and we've talked before about our pillars of growth, uh, the capacity and more importantly, the capability, having that foundation in place and being able to leverage that is absolutely critical. And doing that all the way through to uh, finished dose form uh, capsules, products, and, and also active pharmaceutical that we can supply in our B2B model as well is, is really important. Business development and a focus on revenue is, is key for us. And so that both domestically and internationally remains a key, key focus. Uh, our, our reliance on, on partners here and, and internationally is, is key and them having confidence in what we can supply is, is absolute. The registered products, we know that's going to be really important uh, long-term in terms of how patients access products. So having access to an S3 product, um, that is absolutely key to, to what we're doing. But following through behind that with our product pipeline, um, both from a study farm perspective, but even further back into our, our genetics and accelerated breeding program. We've actually seen the first of our candidates come out of that uh, breeding program and now operational, and we're currently cultivating in our Southern facility, and that product's being made available through, through the, uh, the dry flower process that we've brought online there. So an exciting uh, six months ahead and, and future beyond that. Um, Matt, I'll hand back to you now for any questions we might have. Thanks very much for that, Peter. And to Deborah and Shane as well. We'll now jump into the Q&A segment of the webinar. If anyone does have a question, please feel free to enter it using the Q&A function on the Zoom app. Uh, first, we've got some questions that came through via email. So 
um, Shane, this one would be for you. Why are you concentrating on registering a CBD product first rather than a THC product? Yeah, thanks, Matt. And uh, it's a good question, um, given our capacity to produce, you know, equal quality quantities of both. Um, the what's really important is is speed to market and being one of the first products on the shelf in this, um, particularly in Australia, in this S3 uh, regulatory framework that was announced by the TGA. Um, we had information data on file previous trials that allowed us to accelerate a the completion of a dossier and get that product registration underway um, and that dossier complete so that became our focus in parallel we're also using the sati farm manufacturing line to create thc contain, containing capsules and, and we'll release those as i said earlier towards the back end of this calendar year um, from a registration process we continue to look at how we would evaluate that particular product form for a condition or a disease. So it's not it's not off the table. We've just focused on something that is the fastest to uh, to market, which also drives capacity and facility utilization. You know, a, a registered product will use many tons of raw material and manufacturing capacity out of the facility, which is really important to us as we bring that additional capacity online. Um, and we're looking for you know a, a quick uptick or you know a steady uptick in revenues over the next few years. Thank you, Shane. Um, another one I assume will be for you is: Does Can have any active TGA clinical trials, and if so, what is the trial ID? So we we do have a number of clinical trials where Can are supporting. Um, the they will already be on the Australian and New Zealand clinical trial register. In terms of a CAN sponsored trial, the, this registration trial that we've just announced that has ethics approval has, has been allocated a clinical trial number. And I would expect that that will appear on the Australian New Zealand clinical trials register in the coming days. Thanks, Shane. Next question is, how is CAN positioning itself to capitalise on the likely increase in market demands for over-the-counter and prescription medicines that can assist with higher anxiety levels and aid better sleep? Yeah, another good question. So the S3 clinical trial has a primary endpoint, um, and this is an, this will be for an OTC or a pharmacy-only medicine for CBD only, um, has a primary endpoint of sleep, and then secondary endpoints around quality of life. And I think everybody would agree that sleep um, does drive our ability to cope and improving sleep um, does have the additional benefits on coping and how we tolerate our pain and a range of other things. So this clinical trial will have a prime, as again, we're aiming for a primary endpoint around sleep and then secondary endpoints around coping, stress, possibly anxiety. So that program um, is important for the CBD side of things. On the THC side of things, one of the really uh, important parts of the SAS program is being able to treat patients and gather data on the impact of particularly mixes and blends of CBD and THC on treating symptoms, say, of anxiety. Um, and one of the really unique things that CAN has is that due to the capacity that we have and the raw material, access to raw materials, you know, to put into manufacturing is that we can change ratios and blends and create some bespoke formulations as we get more data about what's working. You know, a lot of patients are being treated with oils at the moment and it's a drop of this and a couple of drops of, you know, a drop of CBD and two drops of THC. And as we get more data around what those ratios look like, we have the ability to create those bespoke formulations, whether it be in an oil we're also in a capsule and we're certainly looking at how we utilize that capsule technology because we know doctors and patients prefer to take one or two tablets a day versus a few drops of oil. So the future we see of medicinal cannabis and particularly treating some of these conditions is in these different ratios of CBD and THC, you know, preferably in a capsule form. Thanks Shane. The next question, what is CAN doing to look at opportunities within the market based on possible research findings that certain CBD derivatives can help prevent COVID-19? I've got yeah, that's a chip on that one, Shane. Yeah, yeah. With an industry hat on as well. The question's come up before. Um, 
I think uh, whilst there's some interesting science going on, what we do want to avoid is the, um, the idea that uh, cannabinoids or cannabis can be talked up as a miracle cure across everything. So um, yes, there's work occurring in that space, but uh, and, and we're well placed from our research background capabilities to, to be involved, but um, we wouldn't want to be pumping up uh, a new COVID cure, cure on the back of COVID right now, on, on the back of cannabis, sorry. Anything to add to that, Shane? No, no, I think look, it's one of those ones you take a watching brief is that uh, um, if we believe it'll help, obviously we'd, um, we'd have products ready to, cap to, to be able to use by patients who we think it may help. Great, thanks for that. The next question is, what will be the catalyst to increase the share price in your opinion? Peter, that'll be on for you. Uh, Matt, we'll, we'll continue to focus on what we're delivering on. That's absolutely critical that um, uh, our efficiencies, our path to revenue, um, getting the facility running uh, and operational is, is our key focus and um, uh, the, the share price will look after itself. Thanks, Peter. Uh, the next question is, it looks like at least one capital raise will be required in the next six months. Any idea how much this will be for? I'll throw that to you, Deborah. Thanks, Matt. Um, there's been no decisions made on any capital raising activities at this time. As I mentioned earlier, we'll continue to closely monitor our expenses and cash flow position going forward. But at the same time, we'll continue to focus on uh, the completion of the Madura facility progression of the Schedule 3 trial and registration of that associated product, and also continuing to increase the sales revenue with our existing products now. Thanks, Deborah. The next question is, what is the size of the cultivation area at the Southern facility and annual production capacity? Uh, so that one, Matt, uh, our Southern facility has um, around 200 square metres of flowering capacity and, and a nominal one and a half thousand kilos production per year. Um, at the moment, that's being adjusted with preparing uh, plant material to send up to Mildura. Um, but uh, the scale of Mildura, our cultivation area up there under glass is 3,200 square metres. So that gives you an idea of where, where we're heading and why we're focused on that. Thanks, Peter. Uh, the next question is, when operating stage 1A at capacity, how many staff will be working at Mildura and how many of those will be cultivators? Um, so we've talked before about the opportunity, the employment opportunities in Mildura, we believe will be up towards 140 uh, staff working in Mildura, but that's across the whole facility from cultivation right through to uh, GMP uh, lab technicians and, and manufacturing uh, and the like. So, but from a, uh, an opportunity around the, the cultivation space, it'll probably be somewhere around 40 uh, that will be part of the cultivation team up there. Thanks, Peter. The next question is, when does management expect to be cultivating stage 1A at capacity? So we're moving into getting that fully operational this, this um, coming half and, and the focus is on how we're going to optimise cultivation through, through the facility. So there's a number of factors that need to be balanced there to, to get it uh, producing optimally, but we expect that in, in the next financial year. Thank you. And the final question, how much will it cost to expand to stage 1B, therefore doubling capacity? Yeah, so going from 1A to 1B takes us from 12.5 to 25,000 kilos uh, nominal capacity. Um, the cost of doing that isn't linear compared to what we've uh, invested and in fact a lot of the investment uh, to date in Mildura has included a number of the services and, and functionality that, that we require and can expand into uh, stage 1B with uh, uh, it'll be a lower level of capital investment required to get to that stage. So it has been designed though, so that we can keep stage 1A fully operational while we uh, expand capacity into stage 1B and 2 beyond that. Okay, thank you for that. We're almost at time. So Peter, I'll hand back to you for a closing comment. 
Thanks, Matt, and thanks everyone for joining. And in fact, I was going to start by saying thank you to the to the CAN team um, in what has been an incredibly hard environment to operate in for everyone. Um, and we're definitely not alone in this, but the, the effort that's gone into having us ready to take uh, occupancy of the facility and get operational now has been incredible. Um, our teams had to work right through the Christmas period um, to, to cover off what we were required to do for both the ODC and the TGA. And the benefits of that now come through though, with what is going to be a really exciting uh, future for us, both in the second half and, and beyond. The capability and capacity we've talked about is, is absolutely critical to providing medicines to Australian patients and into international markets as well that can be uh, trusted and, and we can ensure that we've got continuity of supply available. So exciting future ahead with that. We've got the R&D program behind as well, which is, uh, allows us to ensure that we're setting this up and we've said all along, we're not here to be a commodity cannabis producer, um, differentiated products and high value products that we can produce but make a difference in people's lives is, is really exciting. And to see the momentum that is still behind medicinal cannabis um, and the growth ahead of us is, is really exciting. So we'll focus obviously on, on becoming fully operational here. Uh, the focus on revenue is also a key one. Very exciting uh, future ahead for us though and um, look forward to keeping you abreast of, of progress as we, as we continue. So thanks for your time today and uh, look forward to updating you in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks everyone. That does conclude the presentation for today. Thanks for joining and you can now disconnect.